Hi there and welcome to another 10 minute travel by the travel lady. Today we're going to look at Africa and it's a question I get asked about all the time as we are Africa specialists here. So what is the difference? Well, here's a map and let's look, take a look through that and see so you can see exactly where Kenya, Tanzania are situated and we have South Africa down there at the bottom. There's also a lot of countries in between that people do incorporate as well in their Africa trip. If you do Southern Africa, people will often do Zimbabwe to go and see Vic Falls, possibly Botswana to see the Okavango. So there's lots of choices out there and I'm not going to go into those right now. So let's look at East Africa, Tanzania in particular, vast landscapes. This is what it makes so different. The distances are long to travel, so that's maybe something that you need to take into account, but it's absolutely breathtaking, as you can see from these views. Look at this car in the background, the truck. You can see how small that is as people are viewing this herd of elephants. Gives you an idea of the vast open plains there and consequently the amount of time that you're going to be traveling. But remember any traveling that you do in East Africa from one safari camp to another is a game drive in itself. This is the kind of vehicle you're going to be driving in when you do East Africa. As you can see, it's an open top vehicle, a Land Rover, four wheel drive, very sturdy. And the difference is that when you stop and do some game viewing, you stand up and you look out through the top. Now, this is going to be very different from what you see in South Africa. The only difference when you're not going to be driving a vehicle like that is if you do the fly in safari where you fly into the game lodge and then from there you go in out in their daytime vehicle. But the reason they have the covered vehicles like this is because they will be going driving through some areas where there may be dust or even rain. And the animals are always curious to see you, just as curious as you are to see them. So let's look at a typical itinerary for Tanzania. And here you can see I've chosen the best of the best because a lot of it is flying. So you start off in Arusha and then you fly down to Tarangira, you have some time there, and then you drive from there to Nguruguru Crater. And from there up to Serengeti National Park by flight, and then from there back to Arusha. I've done some of the small internal flights and it's definitely the best way to go. Small aircraft and they fly quite low, so it's almost like a game viewing flight. Let's talk about the Ngorogoro Crater. This is an old volcanic caldera and it's created this very protected environment for the game life. So of course, with a lot of game there, you're gonna get a lot of predators. So the lion viewing is really good here. And uh, the Maasai also like to farm their cattle down there because it's very protected. And that's where the Ngorogoro gets its name from, is from the sound of the cowbells, which in their language is Ngoro Ngoro. So it's quite lovely to have those stories. It's one of the natural wonders of the world. And you can see quite clearly here, when we drove from the top of the, um, the ridge around Ngorogoro Crater and went down, could actually hear, feel my ears popping. That's how high it is. And the Serengeti, huge herds here, just amazing. You will not see this in South Africa. And if you're lucky enough to be there during the migration, wow. I was there during calving season, so I didn't see the migration. But when these wildebeest are moving, of course, the crocodiles and the lions, this is like a moving buffet for them. So it's very, very dramatic. And I would like to return one day and, and see this myself. You're going to see wildlife up close. That's how close you get to them. So you can really see. And the lions, as you can see, I put the vehicle in that shot. So you can see they get very close. They, uh, they recognize the vehicles. They don't see them as a threat, but they sometimes are a little curious, sometimes a bit too curious for comfort. And the elephants, always my favorite. They're everywhere. And when you see the little baby elephants, it's so special, it really is. And the people are amazing, a very unique culture here with the Maasai. They have some interesting habits. They move around with their herds, depending on where the best grazing is. So they're and almost nomadic, I guess, in a sense, they're moving constantly. Um, they'll drink um, cow's blood 
and milk, sometimes at special ceremonies. And if you're lucky enough to meet some of them, you'll get them doing their traditional jumping dances. Uh, yeah, you can have a go if you like. I don't think anybody's going to be able to jump as high as they can, though. And this is typical accommodation that you would stay at there, kind of colonial influence there, and even tented accommodation. Tented, don't be put off by that because it really is very comfortable and very luxurious. And you get to see the Ellies. They love a bit of mud, love lying around, having a little bit of a mud bath there, maybe like a facial as we would do. And the wildlife spotting is incredible. Look at that. Amazing to get that. So what makes South Africa so different? So on this slide here, you can see I'm saying world in one country, it's cosmopolitan cities. Uh, you've got fine dining there, amazing scenery, wine lands, fantastic value, really. That Canadian dollar is quite strong there in the Rand. And let's compare the difference. So East Africa, as you can see, you've got huge distances. South Africa, less distances to drive for game viewing because of game viewing areas more contained. And if you want, you can combine that with some wine tasting and golf. Here is a typical itinerary that I like to offer because as you can see with the blue dots, there's a lot of air in between the places. So you're not gonna have an awful lot of driving unless you're there in the game reserve. And we've incorporated the Victoria Falls in this one as well but you do get to see the Greater Kruger National Park, Cape Town. These are the highlights that you want to see when you go to South Africa. And Cape Town, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. I can say that without hesitation. This is the Victorian Alfred waterfront nestled at the foot of Table Mountain. And there you can see the clouds coming down over Table Mountain, which we call the tablecloth. And this is a typical hotel that you would use on one of those higher end uh, fly-in safaris. You've got a view of Table Mountain in the background. This is the one and only in Cape Town. They have some of the most superb hotels in the world, so you certainly won't be roughing it. And while you're there, you want to go out to Constantia, do some wine tasting, see the beautiful wine lands in that old Cape Dutch colonial style. It really is a treat to go there. And we fly you up to the game reserve, and this is just the typical sitting area of one of the game lodges. Now the rooms are not in the main building, those are separate little self-contained chalets or bungalows, but here you're sitting around the fireplace, you've got the bar in the background, you've got a dining room and lounge behind you there, and you can see behind the fireplace there's those little lamps on the table there because you're going to be having dinner outside most of the time. Now here's the difference that I told you about the open Land Rovers. Here you can see that the seats at the back are tiered, so everybody gets a good view. You don't have to stand up and look out the roof if you want to see the game. You'll see the seat at the front here is empty on this particular picture, but this is typically where your tracker will sit and he will be looking in the dirt road for tracks of animals and the rangers are constantly in touch with each other on their radios if an animal is spotted and be prepared to go off road because when they see something good they're going to go right over dry riverbeds whatever it is to make sure you get that game viewing experience. And let's say you want to spoil yourself a little bit. Well, I spoiled myself a little bit. This is where I stayed on one of my trips, the Ivory Lodge at Sabi Game Reserve. Absolutely incredible. This whole unit was our unit. So we had the lounge on the left-hand side with a cocktail bar and all of those good things. The bedroom on the right, our own plunge pool, was absolutely incredible. We even had an outside shower and it's very private, so you can feel comfortable going and having an outdoor shower. And if you're very adventurous, you can sleep in a tree house. We've done this for many of our honeymooners or people celebrating that special anniversary. Your guide takes you through the bush, drops you off at your tree house, and then leaves you, you're completely private for the night. He does leave a two-way radio with you, just in case, you never know. Let's take a look at a video. Ah, we see that you've been searching for safari. Well, you've come to the right place. We 
practically invented Safari. The Big Five Safari guided game drives. You know the kind. Sipping on an ice-cold pink rooibos-infused cooler as you watch the ripe pink African sunset. Yeah, Safari. Our name is even in the word, Safari. But that's not the only Safari we have, no, no. We have them all. Food Safaris, wine Safaris, desserts of, oh, I'm sorry, desert Safaris. Jumping off things safaris, surfing safaris, mountain safaris, cruising downhill safaris, jaw-dropping safaris, enter the jungle safaris, <laughs> street safaris, culture safaris, and what about nightlife safaris? Those are the best kind. So you see, South Africa is a safari from beginning to end. You want a safari? We'll give you safari. If you're thinking of Africa and you don't know whether to go east or south, give us a call. We're specialists in this area. Thank you.